This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. For those who dared push out into the contested Indian lands, whether European immigrants or descendants of immigrants, that underlying belief that danger lurks in the wilderness took on an entirely new meaning. Such was the setting in territorial Arizona as whites laid claim to lands long controlled by the N.D. or Apache. Although the western Apache had accepted confinement to the reservation just east of Pleasant Valley, that acceptance was reluctant at best, and entirely rejected at worst. The problem for those early settlers was that they never knew which it would be. If the Apaches stayed on their land, then settlers could go about their daily struggles to survive in the Arizona wilderness. If the Apaches did not stay on their land, then the consequences for the settlers could be swift and deadly. Apaches were skilled warriors who excelled in the art of stealth. Even for neighboring Indian tribes, Apaches were often unseen until the attack was upon them. The only protection the settlers had on lands still contested was to remain heavily armed at all times, vigilant of every shadow and brush movement, almost to the point of paranoia, and to build their small cabins as fortresses in the hope that they could wait out an ambush until nightfall, as it was known that Apaches would attack only until twilight. When night fell, however, settlers still found no rest. Darkness called out the rustlers. They rarely attacked settlers, but they actively preyed upon their means of supporting themselves. So, living in the crossroads of Apache discontent and an active theft economy meant that the threat to life by day and the loss of livelihood by night were unrelenting. Unyielding vigilance was the price of settling within this hostile environment. These two factors were critical in shaping the events known as the Pleasant Valley War, the social geography, and the Apache presence. Even though Apaches agreed to live on reservations, the fear of Apaches loomed large enough to shape the lives and actions of the settlers who tried to claim that land. For any true appreciation of what happened in Pleasant Valley and why, both the environment and the people who dominated it for centuries must be written back into the story. The Arizona Highlands The landscape of this story unfolds from the southern repose of the Colorado Plateau. That plateau is a truly unique geographic formation in the American West, and its elevation is one of the dominant features of the northern Arizona landscape. This expanse of compressed sediment, reaching 11,000 feet above sea level at its highest point, first began to arise from an ancient seabed some 80 million years ago, during a period that shaped much of the topography of the American West, including an enormous fold of the Earth's crust known today as the Rocky Mountains. Today the plateau covers about 130,000 square miles of northern Arizona, southern Utah, and parts of western Colorado and New Mexico. It is a dramatic landscape. Canyons carved by primordial rivers have exposed vibrant colors in the cliff walls that tower like ancient temples. The vivid names given to the cliffs of the Grand Staircase in southern Utah could easily apply to the many canyon walls found throughout the plateau. The Chocolate Cliffs, the Vermilion Cliffs, the White Cliffs, the Gray Cliffs, and so on. The land is peppered with creosote bushes, sagebrush, shad-scale scrub, and prickly pear cactus. Dark brown remains of ancient lava flows, which have not been active for at least a thousand years, also break through the soil across this terrain. In the summer months, billowing clouds hang low over the jagged southern rim of the plateau, just as they have for millennia, dark and pregnant, ready to birth another squall. Warm oceanic air from the southwest meets the higher, cooler air on top of the plateau, creating a condition that meteorologists refer to as a rain shadow. Rain falls heavily at the rim, leaving only dry air to move northward across the plateau. When the afternoon rains begin, sometimes with a clap of thunder, sometimes only with a gentle rush of wind, water droplets fall to the earth, pulling trails of cloud downward. 
From a distance, the rain appears like a long, misty veil let down from the heavens.